What's that? What? Work. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's for suckers. I tell you that. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Fucking chumps. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Have You Seen a Podcast. Join here uh, with uh, Michael Falk, Cash Krause. What up? You know, uh, gas prices, unfortunately, gas right now. Gas prices are up. And that they is, actually are up. It's, it's a little frustrating. That is something break. I did want yeah. to bring up on this time. It we was do, my we first. don't talk enough about the economy. No. And it's an underlining <laughs> issue. And all I could think this whole time, seeing the DeLorean drive as fast mm-hmm. as it did, this whole movie mm-hmm. was, he must be paying an arm and a leg for gas prices. Right well, doesn't well, he, he has to your... start in the back of the race to collect all the coins to pay right, for sure. gas. But doesn't the DeLorean take uranium? Ah, from the Libyan yeah, terrorist. Yeah, from the Libyan terrorist. This, it all makes sense. So, I mean, I'm sure. I don't know what the price per gallon of uranium is going for anymore. I I'm sure it's slightly more expensive than gas. <laughs> a little bit, probably not much now. Yeah, depending not on where you're Not if you're, you're fucking at. Doc and you steal that shit, because <laughs> he did. He did. Doc was a criminal at the end of the day. <laughs> he was a gangster, and he did get killed. He did get yeah. killed he did. for it. The Libyan terrorists did come back like they always do. The Libyans. You got to do what you got to do when you're a mad scientist, yeah. though. So did you start that? Yeah, no, no, it's recording. Okay, good. No, yeah. I just want to make Everything's sure. Everything's recording. We're live. Yeah. We live are live in two different ways. And this is my uh, this is my week for the podcast, and I picked, uh, which I can't really say I picked, because we all collectively were like, let's go see Ready Player One. Yeah. Least. It's a, yeah. Anytime but, something comes out like this, it's yeah. a given that it's, it's got to be. Given. What do like, you think Spielberg comes out of the movie? You have to. Yeah, no kidding. Right, it exactly. should be a national holiday. Oh, and I wanted to see this so bad, too. I was so excited to see this. I you did, know, too, I because I read. I was not that excited at first. Yeah, I think I remember you telling me something that you weren't that thrilled no. about going. No, and I don't know why, but I wasn't. And then after the movie, I was like, I'm really glad that I seen this movie. Yeah. I liked it way read, more than I thought it I read yeah. the book, and I was also not so excited to see it. <laughs> oh, you read the book. Oh, yes. I am so happy you read the book. I'm glad we have one person on yeah. this podcast who read the book. One day, Because I wanted to get someone who read the book's opinion yeah. on the film, oh. so this is great. One day you're going to have to teach me and Mason how to read. I'm going to do it. I'm one okay. day we'll, we'll get to I it. I don't read fiction. It's the oddest thing. I'll read like psychology books and stuff. Like boring fucking books. So you're books a serial that killer. Put you to sl- yes. I've tried to tell you guys this for years. <laughs> we just talked about this last fucking podcast episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I read the boring like science books. And you know what's funny is I don't retain most of the information. I'll read it and be like, man, them, these are really great points. These are really great. And then I'll forget them. I'll be able to think about them and know what they're saying, but I can't articulate them through words. I have to do enough of that in school, so when I get a chance, I usually tend to read fiction. Fiction. Although I do read nonfiction once in a while, and I will read a nonfiction book if there's a movie made about it. Uh, uh, Literally the last two years, the only stuff I've read has been comic books. Yeah. It's because you are 12 years old, living in 1983. Well, what are you going to do? Pretty much. Hey, it comes in handy when we review superhero movie, okay? It's true. That's the only time it will come in handy. (laughs) What is the last book you read? The last book I read was uh, The the White Devil, and it's the new one coming out. uh, It's Devil in the White City, and it's the new one that Scorsese is also directing. No way. With Leonardo DiCaprio, where he's playing the serial killer. Yeah. And it's about H.H. Holmes. Oh, yeah. They yeah. Come, they come. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He's one of the most famous Which, serial killers of all time. Yeah. The hotel and everything. Yeah. Well, they they say he's America's first serial yeah. killer. Yeah. Right. Which isn't true. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's the last one I read. Wow. Which was very... And that's a nonfiction book. I do read nonfiction true crime. Okay. Because I do like me some serial killers. I do. It's very interesting. No, it Sounds is. much more interesting than, than the book I read. 12, 12 Rules for Life, George yeah. B. Peterson. I don't read that bullshit yeah. uh, until you had live your life. Like no, it's not, no, that's not whatever. what it's about. That's not what it's about. He's a psychologist. Like It's not about oh, I living your is. life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do you like yeah. him or no? Uh, yeah, I think he's all right. I mean, I like some of the stuff he's in. Because there's a lot of people who don't like him. Oh, and yeah. I can't understand why. I've never heard a debate, like just people sitting down and talking to him. They can't. They can say all these things, but they can't actually sit down and debate him. I don't understand it. He's he's apolitical too. He doesn't like he actually leans more to the left than people would realize, but he just yeah. has these basic things that he lays out for people and they hate it. They call him a sexist and a, all that kind of stuff. I grew up with a Jordan Peterson, third grade. 
<laughs> you might remember. Do I? Yeah. You might remember him. Yeah, yeah, I think I do. He was really good friends with my cousin, which is Did not. Did he look like the Peter Pan from like 2005 or 2006? No, he was movie? black. <laughs> oh, okay. Then never mind. I don't know who he was. No. <laughs> so no, 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 no recent like Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. No. <laughs> okay. No, no recent Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> you doing all right, Mike? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> That was funny. I, I haven't seen you laugh that hard on this podcast before, so that was a fun little change of pace. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's get the fuck off the topic about books. books right? Yes. Yeah. But even though this film is based then, on a poor book, book. I did read this <laughs> yes, book. You did read this <laughs> book. To get to the point across, I did read a book that we are doing. There was a reason for all that. Talk. Is this a pretty long book? I mean, Ready Player One. Is it pretty long? Average through 300, 400 pages. Oh, so maybe? an average book. Average okay. fiction book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, well, uh, I was just no. curious because the the film adaption was what two hours and twenty yeah, something minutes. Yeah, it's pretty long. Yeah, about twenty three yeah, minutes or yeah. something. Yeah, But uh, yeah. I mean, they don't follow closely the book. But we do have to basic say basic idea. The Steven, basic idea is yeah. there. Yeah. Steven Spielberg did the same thing with Jurassic Park too. You know, where he took the basic concept and idea. And a yeah. A lot of people didn't like the translation, or not the translation. So what am I thinking of? Another book I've read. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. But uh, I did. I enjoyed both. You're never going to get. Never. I'm. My expectations are never. I'm. When you read a book, you're never going to get the same. They, you can't translate book to no. screen. It's too. There's too much detail. There's too. It's too long. So no matter about ninety percent of the book. But obviously, there's some films that do better justice to, like the World Lord of the Rings films. Obviously, right. did a very well job of portraying, even though they cut out ninety five percent of everything. Yeah. Because the books are. 600 pages deep fantasy yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh but you have to but this one yeah this one did not follow like the whole race scene which is a huge scene wasn't yeah. in the book that wasn't the in shining the part wasn't in the book there's scenes like there's scenes like the shining part but not no no race scene really hmm. yeah so in the book i guess we might as well just talk about it but yeah in, yeah in the book the challenges are much much more nerdy and 80s driven like one of the challenges is uh the first challenge was they don't get into is he has to go into this uh dungeon and he has to play this demon at joust which is an <laughs> 80s yeah, game yeah, and yeah. no one can play and in the book the girl artemis she's been there for 10 days playing yeah she can't beat him either she she found him first Jeez. but then eventually wade comes in so the challenges are like that right they're right. like they take a very long time which obviously you couldn't you couldn't really watch it fucking weed. Yeah. Although they did, <laughs> he did play adventure. Yeah, the character, the which isn't in the book either. But, but and then yeah, another challenge is he has to reenact like the entire. Have you seen the movie War Games with Matthew Broderick? Yep. He has to play the Matthew Broderick's character one with the really shitty computer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where Matthew Broderick has to play the video game and then yep. to save the world from nuclear war but uh he has <laughs> to great movie. yeah in in one of those scenes he has to literally play the exact same character you know as a simulation he has to play matthew project character exactly oh that's word cool. for word and then it'll give you 100 points if you do right movements and everything wow so he's with the actors yeah. and everything which is a really cool but it's like it's two and a half hours and yeah but which is the whole thing is he's seen all these 80s movies so many times because of what's the holiday holiday yeah, yeah holiday. Holiday. he grew holiday. up in the 80s yeah. so which they never really convey in this movie enough where the ga the gaunters, the people hunting for mm -hmm. the eggs or whatever, they know everything, everything. about the, every like yep. album, all every, the pop culture information. Every movie, every they've seen like he's seen it fifty times. Like even obscure stuff like and the, they never really got across that, I don't think, in the movie. Which I kind of had a problem with. But. See, I, I thought they did, and maybe that's just because I love eighties and nineties pop culture. Not so much nineties, more eighties, but I at least that would convey very well to me because I understood like Artemis and all the characters were like they knew all this shit from the eighties that most people would not have known. Some of even the characters, but then even the the uh, scene with H, his friend, were like she never saw Shining because yeah, I was just like true. I understand like yeah. well how how are, how are you, you how are you this, this fall this far into and you never saw the Shining? Very true. Like, Very true. I mean, if, and especially if it's holidays, obviously it's holidays one straight movies. It was the challenge. Yeah. Are you not going to see it ever? Even though you don't like scary movies, you're not going to yeah. see it where you're risking like, was it half, half a trillion, trillion dollars? dollars? Yeah. yeah. And the so stuff stake like that. in the company. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the Oasis. And really, 
and another thing in the book is the Oasis in the book, it's everything. You you go to school in it because the world is so shitty. You go to school in it. You mm. learn in it. You do everything. You do everything in so it. So whoever controls the Oasis controls the, the world. world. Yeah. And that's why I never thought they kind of got the scope down where it was kind of just like kind of a game they were just mm-hmm. playing. So, yeah. Stuff like that I thought was different. And stuff like that I thought they could have easily added into the movie. But, uh. Yeah, they pretty much just made Wade the only one that knew everything about Hol- Holiday. Yeah, Wade and uh, Artemis, I guess. Somewhat, yeah. But even she kept telling Wade that you're the one who knows the ins and outs of this guy's life, everything. So Yeah, and, and like in the book, like everyone knows yeah. everything. Like those five final characters, whatever his friends, the other one that was like Shimidu or something, the... She, uh, Shito. Yeah, those guys. Those guys all know everything about because those are all the best. Those are the best, you know, gaunters in the world or whatever they are. Yeah, I I leaned over to Mike right away. And they don't all conveniently live in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is I don't know, which is something they never discuss. But you know what's funny about that is is some of those things I picked up on too, but it's very Steven Spielberg esque. Like where everything, like you kind of allow, because the story's so intriguing that you kind of allow those minor things, those minor details to be like, okay. Kind of. For me. Yeah. I don't know why it's always been, I mean like with the Goonies or like with anything else, it's just kind of let the little things slide or back to the future. Or yeah. Those little details, as long as you can keep me engrossed into the film, I let those little details slide. I didn't think it was anything as big as like that though. I've never... I don't know. It's just, right. Spielberg. Did Spielberg to me has always been highly detailed, except for. Oh no, and I'm not. Except saying, for in I'm his. I'm not saying that he's not. In his later sure. years, but I'm, I'm yeah. just talking about like absurdities and stuff, like with the Goonies and the teeth holding up the child. Yeah, yeah, you, you stuff, I mean? stuff like, like that. that I'm fine with. Yeah, when yeah. he's campy and stuff like yeah. that. But uh, I mean, it would have took two seconds, like we said, little details would just take two seconds to say, mm-hmm. "Oh, we just flew in." Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Instead of them just all being there or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, in the book, Wade's from like Oklahoma or some shit, right? Oh, he's from Columbus. He's the only one from Columbus. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm, I wonder. That is a very good point, though, that they were all Col- just kind of showed yeah, up. And yeah. Columbus is the like biggest showed up out of virtual nowhere. reality game ever, yeah. and they're all in the same town. Yeah. Weird, but I know. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. It was kind of fishy. Though. How? Uh, which this isn't a big surprise to anyone. I think everyone probably saw it coming. But I leaned over to Mike right away and was like, "H is a girl." How How long did it take you to realize she was a girl? Oh, well, because I read the book. I... Oh, duh. That's yeah. right. Hello. But I thought this movie, I thought everything in this movie was pretty predictable. Yeah. From, <laughs> from the right. start, I think from maybe in the first five minutes, I knew how this movie was going to end, mm-hmm. obviously. Of course. But, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Where I thought, I didn't even think, I thought that Wade was a pretty boring character in general. I thought that Artemis was a much more interesting character than Wade ever was. I just, I don't know. I guess it all kind of moved really fast for me. Yeah, Which is, I just feel like there was so much. I think I think overall, I think they did a really great job, but there's just so much fucking information yeah. in this movie that you're trying to just compact into this two hour film that is almost like damn near impossible. Because in all honesty, I didn't I didn't I didn't fall in love with the love story. No, I didn't no. Fall I didn't I didn't buy it. I didn't fall in love with any of the no. characters. Yeah, really and did not. and then like we said, you're kind of backing all the information where you're kind of having to take leaps and bounds with yeah. stuff. Where it's like, they fell in love, or he fell in love with her so in fast. Like ten like, hours. Is this? Yeah. And it it is a thing where he's obviously at least in the book it conveys it where well he's a big nerd. Right. He's a really big nerd in the book and everything. But you never kind of, I don't know. You never really got the sense in the movie either where mm-hmm. I think, and like, is it the first girl he's ever met? Because they immediately fell, and she wasn't <laughs> even weirded out. No. I. I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, man, that'd be fucking weird. Yeah. Some guy you met on a video game yeah, starts, you don't just, even know who he is. Right. You gotta be careful with that stuff, <laughs> too, these days, man. Especially you then. You talk about basic catfishing on, like, these yeah, social no media kidding. platforms. There's gotta be some serious catfishing yeah. going on in the Oasis. Well, yeah, and and it's it's in the time 2045. So you gotta think, yeah. this has been around. You gotta think all these, everyone knows the signs. Everyone knows everything about. Exactly. But uh, no, not in this. It's all pretty, pretty fresh and new. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I gotta. Another thing with Spielberg is I've always, I've really paid attention after we reviewed the Goonies. I started paying attention to his movies. 
as far as like the opening scene, because I really like the opening in The Goonies. I really like the opening in this. It told you the whole story in a matter of two minutes. I mean, you really think about it. When they show, um, when they show uh, Wade, and he's sliding down the, the apartments or the trailers, and you're seeing all these different people live out their fantasies yeah. in the oasis, you got basically the entire concept of the movie. And then he gets all the way down, and the lady's like, oh, life's got you down or whatever. So yeah. you go in the oasis. It just tied in that whole movie of like what that world was like, and he did it in two minutes. Well, that was just him telling the story of like the first half, because the first half of the book is like you don't even meet a character; it's all right. pretty much set up, set up, set right, up. right, right. Which you get a lot of better detail of what the oasis kind of is and whatever. But obviously, yeah, I just mean yeah. like the the initial setup to where like I could at least grasp the concept of what the hell was yeah. going on. And I did like I that. I like how that scene movie. was shot too, when he was moving through and. Showing everyone like yeah. their different world and everything, yeah. like the stripper and one guy's boxing. And the kids boxing. Yeah. boxing, yeah, yeah. I like you got to live out your fantasy, you know, what you'd want to be in real life. Oh yeah, kind of cool. Oh hell yeah, I, I can't <laughs> wait for that. Yeah, oh, that's the first thing. I Hopefully told in twenty forty five, this is, becomes true. This we'll be pretty old by then. And though. that's twenty forty five. Yeah, and that's the, that's the thing where. Uh, it just seems like in this movie, I just got the sense where it just seemed like they were just thinking it's just a game. Yeah. Which is a game where yeah. like, you'd think, it, or even though we just saw it, you'd know that this is obviously a way of life. From, cause in, the, in 2045, the Earth is just shitty. Mm-hmm. I mean, it obviously shows that because he lives in like uh, uh, mobile home stacks. Yeah, yeah, and like his Oasis machine is in like a uh, car wreckage place. Yeah. Like a dump for cars? I don't know. Yeah, it never said why he hid his. I'm glad he did though, because he'd been yeah, dead. But it... <laughs> well, again, it it gets into like the home. He has a really bad home yeah, environment. Yeah, he's got a bad home life. In in the movie, it gets on a lot of that too. His stepfather's an abusive drunk. It's his, his uncle. Well, I got that. Or his yeah. uncle, yeah. That's I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's why he did it just to get. And the thing it says because because you think because everyone goes to school, everyone has to go to school. Mm-hmm. They give everyone the the like the necessary gear. Yeah. So that's how everyone has. And that was another thing too, which was 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 very weird. Is that whole like death scene? I didn't care. I didn't give a shit that the aunt died. I didn't give a shit that the step exactly uh, yeah or not the step yeah, exactly. the uncle died. I didn't care about any of that, and it didn't really seem like Wade cared. <laughs> No, I mean, really. well, it gets His so aunt fast. Died, yeah. and then he was like, oh, "Okay, on to the next thing." It should have definitely built that home. Up. Yeah, because a little all bit all more. it showed was it just showed that they were just shitty people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it could have shown that he like somewhat still cared about had his some aunt. sort of connection yeah. with his aunt. And it does Maybe. do that all. It does does all does that all in the book and everything. But uh, yeah, they cut that part. out. But again, like I can't really get too upset because the movie's already two hours and 20 minutes it's like what do you expect spielberg to do at the same time like so much information so i feel like i could have sacrificed a lot of the real world stuff to make the in-game stuff more appealing game stuff was amazing and see this is where this is where i feel kind of hypocritical because i'll talk about assassin's creed and be like oh they should have done more in game but then you get something like Ready Player One, and I'm like, oh, I would have liked to have a little bit more human development. <laughs> Fuck you, Mason. Make up your mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm going to go back to saying, like, overall, like, this, again, like, it was a fucking awesome movie. Mm-hmm. I really did enjoy it. Me too. It's just hard to balance those two things, you know, those two worlds. Which is why trying to turn a book into a movie never goes good. I can't say never. Very rarely. No, it almost always goes good. I mean, but it just, for people that expect to see the book, I mean, because Harry Potter yeah. went good, Lord of the Rings right. went, went good, good. yeah. yeah any Scorsese really good. film goes good, but... Basically any comic book. Films are, or books are laid <laughs> out, yeah, books are laid out much, they're way different than well, they film. Don't, they don't have a, they can take their time and do whatever the fuck they want. They really There's can. No. And be so much more deep. As you were saying earlier, be so much more detailed. Especially like you know? in Lord of the Rings books, you know, you get three chapters of fucking Tolkien describing a tree. Mm. <laughs> you get that <laughs> level of detail. I've, I've yeah. heard those details are, in that book is so ridiculous. He's like the one that, yeah. He, yeah. Where, where it's like the book could yeah. have been shortened 200 pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, invented, he invented a new language for yeah. it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's stuff like that where you're not going to get... I've always wanted to read the books. You're not going to get 45 minutes of a character narrating yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the depth of a tree or anything but that. I know. I've always wanted to read the books, but I've heard that from a lot of people that Tolkien just... His ex, or his uh, explanations are just so long. 
is uh, they're gr- oh. yeah. I would always tell someone to read the books for sure because I love the Lord of the Rings books. Are but they good? It, oh, they're, they're worth amazing. it still. Yeah, I know. I need. A, I need. There's a reason them. they're so right. famous and popular. Yeah. Well, I love the movies. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. But and that's the, someday we'll have to review that because that's that's one where I'll shine. Yeah, that's one I'm where I down know for that. Yeah. yeah, and we have to talk about soon the. I know we're on Ready Player One, but whatever. We do need to talk about soon about uh, the Avengers, what we're going to do coming up to that. Oh, up yeah. To that. We'll talk about that. Yeah, later. Let's talk about the race scene, which I thought I liked the race scene, or I liked the scene where they're racing. Uh-huh. But the, the whole thing scene, the right? whole thing of no one ever driving backwards. They've been at this for four years. These are the best racers in the yeah. world or whatever. The first fucking thing you do when you play a racing game is drive backwards. Drive backwards. That's always the secret. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do that. I did that shit in, on the Nintendo 64 and Mario Kart. I was yes. like, fuck it. Turn Eating around and go the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because like, just... there's always a secret fucking pass. Exactly. But, uh, always. Yes, and these are the best gamers in the world. They've been, they've been racing for four. Yeah. No one ever went 30 feet. And then at the end, he's like, oh, yeah, eventually uh, Artemis guy, because she saw me saw go me backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I can't believe... That was just ridiculous to me. Like the I liked how they did that though, where he was like, and then he told someone, and then she told someone, and yeah. then he told someone. And that's and that, then his friend. And that's how it is in the <laughs> yeah. book, too, which is realistic because that's that's how kids never. are. Yeah. But you gotta think any game that comes out, even any game today that comes out, every secret is broken in like the first day yeah. yep. it comes out. Yep. There's people that are so serious about gaming mm-hmm. that they know every everything. Just think about the Mario, how many different like Easter eggs and how many people have like broken the game and everything mm-hmm. and how the tricks they can beat it in like thirty seconds yeah. an hour or something. So you got to think people would have would have just went backwards. Yeah. You would think in the most that they important tried. race yeah, in, the, in, in the, most, the world, half a trillion dollars. You would have tried. This company's spending so much. Was one company that we haven't talked about the IOI, IOI yeah. who's spending billions. No one's gone backwards. Frustrating for me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and all of the challenges to me didn't seem like they were didn't have a lot of stake to them, or didn't seem like they were tough challenges where it would yeah. take that long to figure out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I will say, I will say though, the as far as the visual of the entire race scene, what's fucking amazing, in my opinion, I love the race scene. I thought seeing Rexy was fucking cool as shit. Uh, King Kong. Mm-hmm. I thought all those uh, were really well done. I just, I enjoyed it. How'd you like it? The racing? Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. But what this movie did was it kind of mesmerized you with all the callbacks and mm-hmm. all that Easter egg stuff. And you kind of forget that you're you're watching a movie and you got to pay attention to the actual plot and everything. For sure. And that's... I don't know if this is kind of what you're saying, but sometimes the CGI I just thought was too, I don't know, too much. It was too confusing, I thought, where it was kind of hard to track what you're supposed to be watching and everything. Because like you said, there's so much. So like, much going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, There's you, so much going on. And yeah. in that battle scene, like the battle scene, you're like, what, what am I, who am I supposed to be paying attention to? Because mm-hmm. you're, so, you're looking at. You're talking about the final battle? Yeah, and stuff like that, yeah. where you're looking at so much other stuff where it's kind of, it's kind of confusing yeah. and kind of, I don't know, I was just. Yeah, like trying to, to find yeah, everything. Yeah, and I was, and it didn't help. I had to sit pretty close to the screen in this oh, one, <laughs> so the CGI was really like close to having a seizure. Well, I went back a second time and like watched, just like the first time. Obviously, you go to enjoy it, and then the second time more for the storyline and stuff. But uh, I don't know where I was going to go with that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it just it was there and it was gone. So. Well, so, uh, like I was telling Michael before we started the book. The, like the book the book isn't great in my opinion I didn't love it to like some people because some people were pretty upset about really? it really yeah the book by no means is a great book right. like a hundred years from now it's not gonna be like you know a fucking uh, The Outsiders or something or like To Kill a Mockingbird like right. it's not gonna be remembered <laughs> like that yeah. but uh yeah but what the book what everyone loved about the book is the whole nostalgia thing and that's what it plays off yeah. of but it's all 80s nostalgia in the book no. Was it written in no, the 80s? Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and shit like it that. It was written like f- five years ago. Oh, really? That's weird. Well, it makes sense because 
because Halliday's from the '80s, so everything yeah. that he did was yeah. he was Dungeons and Dragons. He everything he was obsessed with the '80s pop culture, right? Just like you know, Breakfast Club. They reference a ton of stuff like that. Yeah, they did. So it wouldn't it didn't really make sense for him to really have all that other stuff. Yep. Like the like the Iron Giant and a lot of like the stuff that we would know. Yeah, because the Iron Giant was what ninety nine. I think it might have been even later than that. Yeah, it's it two thousand three or something. Maybe yeah, it's pretty late. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, and a lot of the things were obviously things for other people, kids younger than us, right, whatever, too, to see. But, uh, yeah, and I thought it kind of, I, to yeah, me, they, I, they even had Overwatch, which yeah, is exactly. a brand new video yeah. game. They had a ton like, of stuff like that, yeah. yeah if you, but, uh, to me, I thought either I would have liked it if they just stayed 80s. Mm-hmm. But the issue with did. that, the issue with that, and I will say, is every character or every person in the Oasis has got to choose their own avatar. And I think a lot of that, like Overwatch, were yeah. people choosing their own avatars. Yeah, yeah, that that's, could that's be. True, stuff like that, yeah. yeah, that yeah, that does make. I, well, in the, uh, I know, but it wasn't like. It was all uh, avatars from our time. It's twenty forty five, so you know we would be getting a lot of new characters oh, yeah, that we would like, would be. Yeah. I mean, it's forty years of hello, yeah. Why yeah, I'm like, you, who the fuck's gonna be playing Overwatch in forty years? I'm like, yeah. I'm, that's what I was thinking. Is like, why are these characters stopped at two thousand eighteen? That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Previous, so, so, but if they stayed in the eighties, mm-hmm. they could have done all. They could have done that because and because of the world is built around the eighties and everything about that, they could have kept it. Yeah. And again, you're thinking, oh, you mix in culture now with the 80s you know is it a is a 13 year old kid gonna get the reference get, get a joust reference or the adventure no. atari reference no is he really gonna care about that so it's yeah. kind of confusing to me that they wouldn't and if you like 80s pop culture which you do oh, then you should love. definitely you yeah. should read the book then yeah because it's i need to all fucking 80s yes yeah, culture. See, I love yeah. That. yeah and that's why people liked it i mean it's, it's pretty generic story of the kid kind of the venture and everything right. i can go but uh it's made special because of that un- and whatever the writer's name or whatever he grew up in the 80s too so he knows firsthand and he does it really really well my favorite um my favorite character in this book or book jeez, my favorite character in this movie was uh by far the bad guy i thought he nailed this role ben whatever his name Sorrento? is sorrento yeah yeah, I thought very good. I thought I thought he was good. I thought his avatar looked weird. Yeah. It was a combination yeah, of big, like, like Superman, Boss, guy. Shrek. Yeah. yeah, it looked like it looked real. It but was I, weird. And the, obviously, that's that's what's his name from Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. who does yeah. an awesome villain? And he does an American uh, Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, Ben Mendelsohn. He's been a ton yeah. of. I knew it was Ben something. But yeah, he he was really good in it. I thought he stole the show as far as like performance wise outside of the Oasis. Yeah, uh, especially I, I thought his role. It seemed like he just really enjoyed that. They just being. made him so dumb though, so technology <laughs> dumb. They did, yeah. but I love the whole. I love the whole when they they got before you know though. But he's got that guy in his ear, and he's like, "Man, come on, man." He goes, "I love all this stuff." He goes, "Turn on some Durant." Yeah, yeah, Durant. exactly. Yeah. He goes, "I'm not a corporate bigwig, man." Doing all that shit. Yeah, they made. Yeah, and you, but it, but they did a really good job of just showing the disconnect of like corporations compared to like these gamers. Who yeah, are where truly it's, it's just the profit or whatever. And, yeah, yeah, and care about it. So they showed that good disconnect for sure. And that's all they wanted to do. The IOI was was just be control, yeah. in control because Oasis is free to everyone. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked it. I liked. Uh, my favorite scene out of the whole movie was the shining for scene. For sure. Yeah. That, which I, I was going to bring that, that up was, too. Which that I was thought my favorite was scene. not just well written and everything, but it was really well choreographed. And it was kind of mesmerizing to see. It was awesome. It was and very cool. Not too long ago, we reviewed The Shining on mm-hmm. this podcast. Yeah. So it was, it was so Thank God awesome you guys have seen it for yeah, you yeah, to yeah. get all those references. <laughs> but uh, it does obviously do the most famous references. It does. But uh, yeah. Really, and as soon as you see those two little fucking twins, <laughs> those goddamn God twins, damn dude. It. You knew shit was gonna hit. I know. Man. And the girl, she, she didn't even. She had no idea. She never. She didn't even know the twins. I she know, thought, I was like, really. Like, even if you didn't know The Shining, you know the you twins. You know to stay away from. Yeah. Yeah. You know a way to stay from two girls who were like, "Come play with us." Any like, girls no, talking? Fuck you. Get away from yeah. me. <laughs> 
doesn't happen in real life. Oh. And when it does, you better get the you better fuck run. out yeah. of there. Because yeah. some fucking crazy yeah. blood's going to come out of an elevator or something. <laughs> I'm surprised they showed that scene, actually. The blood scene. Really? Cause, well, uh, well, the original, how he, he couldn't have that. He couldn't have it. He had to save his rusty, rusty sewer water, water or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, Times that's a lot changed. of blood. Yeah. But still, it is still a PG-13 movie. I mean, That is true. That's a I mean, that blood is from people. I, yeah, it's, <laughs> got it's from it. something. It's from but I, I think it does help that it's obviously a, a video, video game. A video it's virtual game. reality yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. I, I really love the opening scene, though. When we first get to see that it's The Shining, it's that big, wide shot of the mansion. Not yeah. outside, but inside, down yeah. the stairs. But they that did such cool. a cool job of having them walk down those stairs. It just looked so real. Mm-hmm. Like, it looked like the 80s shot. Yeah. Like the 80s style of filming, but then 2018, like avatars walking down the stairs and stuff. It was just, it was so well done to where I started thinking, did they go up to that house and reshoot? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, did they it, use green screen? Like, I could not tell. It was to what, the, well, yeah, it was a green screen. <laughs> well, no, no, I knew it was. But, uh, but, but yeah. I mean, like, watching it, I couldn't. But, uh, yeah, in watching it, I was like, because they, they did such a good job, like you said, I'm yeah. like, how much are they going to show? Because, like, <laughs> they show the old lady, yeah. but they didn't obviously show... The real, I right. mean, it was the a CGI real, yeah, kind of yeah, zombie, yeah. but I'm like, man, are there, because that part in The Shining is the the worst part. Yeah, it's That awful. old, saggy, decayed lady. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Never get that image out of here. That part is so fucked up, yeah. yeah but, uh, yeah, so I'm like, what are they going to show here? But yeah. they did show her for somewhat, yeah. And they showed all the best parts of The Shining, too. Like, even if it was just for split seconds, like the maze scene. Is falling into the maze and then the big axe is coming. And yeah, and that was they really use good. the yeah. axe scene too, where he's busting through the door. Yeah, I know. I was. I, really I thought they were going to show. I thought they face though when he was. Chasing. I thought it was for sure it was going to be CG H. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, yeah, so did I. But at least it could have been. I mean, I know. I was hoping. I thought for sure we got that axe. I know. I was, I was like, poke his little yes, head in. He's yeah. going to, and then he didn't. I was like, well, understandable. Jack Nicholson. I'm Probably sure, didn't want yeah, no, there's no the way. Movie. Probably yeah. not. He's no. retired. He doesn't yeah. want to, to lend oh, anything. You. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> it's like, I'm retired for a reason. Don't but put I'm all these sure balls I, on my I face. Guarantee there, I guarantee the first idea was to get the CGI him oh, or something. Oh, without a doubt. And they had to obviously. Because yeah. it seemed like they were setting that up where they were. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing like Terminator Genesis when Arnold came back. Or not Genesis. It is Genesis, right? The old Terminator with. Terminator Genesis face? is the newest one. Okay, then no. Terminator Salvation. With Christian Bale? Christian yeah, Bale. Yeah, Salvation. Yeah, and then Arnold comes back for like a minute, and it's terrible CGI. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, the, oh, God. That, yeah. it's the freaking poster of him when he was a bodybuilder. Yeah, bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. It's this. It's that Arnold. Yeah, it's literally that Arnold. And it is Arnold from the first one, because mm-hmm. he even has the hair, but it's like... Yeah, the hair. But if Disney did it nowadays, they could probably do a new Terminator that way. Oh, no. I would not want to see it. Too much CGI still throws me off. Yeah, I know. They use it, even in Rogue One when they use it, they showed her in really bright light, which you usually don't do. General Tarkin looked pretty good, though. But they kept him in a pretty good shadow, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Yeah. General Tarkin was great. Yeah, That's the secret. Keep it dark. Exactly. You can't see the fine details, and it still looks good. Yeah. And General Tarkin, he never went into a fucking room with the lights on. Never. He always had a shadow on him. He's an evil motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Let's see. What was it? Okay, so The Shining obviously was the second key. Yeah. Correct. And then yeah. They get the, oh, and I love that too. The IOI when they bounce back to IOI, the IOI, and he's like, "Well, now we have to get through the Shining challenge," and everyone's screaming and freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> and the zombie funny, lady yeah. stabbing people and stuff. It was so funny. I was like, "That's great." That made me laugh out loud. In the yeah. Theater. That was funny. And normally I don't laugh out loud. Too often, but that one definitely. Made I do. I, I will if it deserves it. it, and I did laugh. <laughs> yeah, I laughed at that part, and I laughed. Part maybe the only two times I laughed was uh, the part where Chucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and the guy's like, oh. "That's fucking Chucky." <laughs> 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 his as soon as you see that man, you just yeah. gotta kill yourself. I you mean, do. you gotta find, you gotta take that helmet off. Yep, for sure. Especially for, and that was the kind of thing where, because it kind of it, what they, obviously what he was. What Spielberg trying to do is touch base with everyone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But stuff like that, where like when I was a kid, I only saw ever saw Chucky on like VHS, like the covers. So it always just scared the shit out of me too. So and if I saw that in a video game, I would be, because when I was a kid, that was the scariest fucking thing. Yeah. Me. Dolls and Chucky. 
And that would be my nightmare in a video They had game. almost all of the old horror they film did. monsters in there. They had Freddy. They had mm-hmm. Jason. Yeah. Chucky. They had a lot of them, yeah. They I'm had a to lot think. more. They, they probably had, had every. Too. They probably yeah. had every character from every movie in this movie. They showed so They had much a lot. That, way more than I thought they were going to have. Showed a lot of Laura Croft throughout this movie. Did you guys see that? She showed up like three or four times. She's she showed up character. in the race scene. She showed up in the final battle. She showed up a few times. I was just like, whoa, okay. Um, I only caught her twice, but then I saw it online <laughs> like two other times. She showed up, and I was like, okay, well, that's twice as much as I saw. I think I did see a few characters a few times. Like, they kept yeah. showing up, too. But, uh, yeah, I like that Chucky scene. It was good. It was good, yeah. Fucking Chucky. What there else? Was, what other scenes? Well, we just got done talking about The Shining. That's the second key. So, the third, third key. The third key is, is Adventure. The Adventure. Which yeah. was, I thought, just underwhelming. Very underwhelming. I liked how it tied in, though, for the first Easter egg ever for the final clue. Yeah. I kind of liked the yeah. tie-in, though. I, I appreciated it because I was like, "Wow, he went back to the very first video game that ever had an Easter egg." Yeah, ever. which and they that's do they cool. do make a point of it in the book too and yeah. everything. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's the last. Because the tie-in was cool, but it wasn't very like I don't know climactic, right? For being the last exactly thing. Well, that's why I thought Especially I didn't think any of them. They already told you what what they were going to do before they actually showed up. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, it's going to be in the dark room and you got to wander around." Yeah. So then when it came time for him to actually do it, it was like, "Okay, well, just do it, I guess." Yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel <laughs> like but they you could tell they're trying to amp it up by everything that was like happening around mm-hmm. them with the girl being stuck or Artemis being stuck in IOI or right. yeah. her almost getting caught. And whatnot. And then the bomb that goes off and kills every character. Yeah. Which yeah. does happen in the book. But before that happens, I really liked how they tricked Ben, Ben's character, uh, Serrano. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they Sorrento. Tri- or Serrano, excuse me. Uh, but they tricked him because they, because he left his password out. What a I know. dummy. He put his password on there. Like, who does that? In charge of the, just the, it's like being in charge of Apple. Yeah, it's like And B, then like Steve Jobs. B0. Like, but, Five five. It was boss man sixty nine boss man, boss man yeah. sixty nine or something like that. He right leaves now. his password on his computer. I Tommy. mean, <laughs> but in the year twenty forty five, he's still writing on fucking yeah. paper. Yeah, <laughs> but they hacked into his thing and, and they inceptioned him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly though, that when that awesome. happened, the whole time I was like, "What the? It's like, how did they get in there? Yeah. Did I miss? Did I didn't go to the bathroom? I was like, the first whoa, time whoa, I was whoa. there. Yeah, they're not gonna show him getting into the building. I know. I was like, that's so weird." Then you find out later that they built the whole thing. I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Okay. That was one of those things where it kind of threw me for a loop. I, li- I really liked that whole scene, though. Um, I didn't like how they didn't explain like how they did it or anything. I mean, they, they obviously got his password in, but did they create another world? Well, no, they got him right in the trance. Well, they do kind of explain it because they say they got him right in between the, uh, between the oasis in real life mm-hmm. when he was coming in and out of it. Oh, they put like, in his password and were able to cut the um, <laughs> interference. I don't fucking know. I'm, not I'm sure the science that. isn't real. No, I'm sure yeah, the science yeah. is not very accurate. Or, <laughs> no, probably not. I'm sure their 30-second explanation of it probably wasn't too accurate either. Let me tell you a problem I did have was the Iron Giant problem. Have you guys seen Iron Giant? Yeah. Yes. One of my favorite movies of all time. Love it. Of love, all time. I love the Iron Giant. Whoa. But if you've seen the Iron Giant, you know Iron Giant doesn't fight. He doesn't like violence. At the end, he was just killing everyone. <laughs> it was unrealistic to me. No. Well, I did like the T2 send-off at the end. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was, <laughs> the, the, that the was funny. At the end, and wow, that was awesome. That was cool. I definitely thought they underused, uh, not Nick Frost, but... Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. I did too. Yeah. And he had a weird American accent that I've never heard do before. That was really throwing me and off. And one character that we didn't use. I mean, that they we kind of used him because the he Avatar. Has, he has a huge part in the book. Yeah. A huge. None of that. None of that. Like librarian bullshit. Yeah. But he has a huge part where eventually 
he's the one like helping them. Obviously, he helps them with like he gives them that quarter thing, which and I thought I was. I knew that was coming into play somewhere. I just thought it was so. I didn't weird. know how, but I knew when he flipped that quarter. I yeah. go, okay, that's got to be a. There's got to be a reason. I didn't know it was an extra life, obviously. In the book, he does a perfect game of Pac-Man where he beats the game to get that quarter. Oh, which okay. Is, to me, yeah, a little more. A little better. And really, what what did he get the quarter for this one? He just won a bet? Won a bet, yeah. He won that bet saying that her name was, the, Karen's name was the only time ever brought up in all of the things because Holiday, Halliday, had wiped the memory from all of it except that occurrence. Yeah, of but her name. was he just waiting to give him that quarter? Was he just waiting to give him a reason? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> was yeah. he waiting for a bet well, to pop up? Yeah, so I don't I didn't understand that, but he bet all of his coin. He bet all of his Wade bet all of his coin with him. Yeah. And he goes, "Ah, don't worry about it." He goes, "Nope, a bet's a bet." And he flipped him the quarter. Oh, I bet so. you, and he didn't have he couldn't have had that much coin at that point because he did spend it all. Who did? Wade well, yeah, but he he hadn't zeroed out at all. No, no, in but years. Yeah. So even with a hundred thousand, he probably was sitting. Well, kind of because he didn't have much at the race, and he's been at it for four years. We didn't talk about the fucking holy hand grenade, real quick. One of the items that he bought. You guys know what that's from, right? Of course. Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, Monty Python. <laughs> then never mind. Yeah. Monty Python. But well, we hadn't brought it up, so at least I was gonna fucking talk about it. Yeah. But that was awesome that was when awesome. I saw. It. But it was so fast that I almost missed it. Is the like, holy oh, holy hand grenade? And I was like, I know, yeah. was that? Yeah, that was. Yeah, no, that was definitely Monty Python. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, cool. I, I knew immediately as soon as he, because remember, he goes and buys it first. And then, is the holy hand grenade the one that blows up everyone? You're talking about the catalyst. Oh, that was yeah. a catalyst. Yeah, it's yeah, a catalyst. Yeah. yeah. We didn't talk about that scene when he's dancing with Artemis. I fucking loved it. Oh, my God. I no, 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 not the dancing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And IOI breaks in, right? And they're shooting and blah, blah, blah and all that. And then he brings out the Rubik's Cube. Did anyone notice the sound, or not the soundtrack, but the track that was playing as soon as he did it? It was the Back to the Future. Oh, you know, the really? Little yeah. time, the little time thing that they do right before they go into mm-hmm. travel, you know? Yeah. And it did that. And then it reversed time 30 seconds back. I was like, oh, that was so awesome. That was a good scene. It was yeah. so I totally cool forgot about that. to hear that. That's the scene where they fall the... in love after five minutes of meeting. <laughs> She's like, why didn't you use that in the first place? <laughs> Dumbass. Why didn't he? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Because it's a movie. Yeah, yeah it's a movie. It didn't, yeah, didn't make a lot. No. But I love that. I love all the Back to the Future references. There's a lot of references. I got to say, though, Steven Spielberg's pretty modest guy because he could have had a hell of a lot more of his movies. Like Jaws. Like how easy would it have been, how cool would it have been to see Jaws? Like, you know I know, but I mean? where? Flopping around on land? No, but I, I mean, you could. It's the, oa- they, hello, the Oasis. I'm I sure Jaws, pro- about Jaws it probably it was in there yeah. at some point. He probably was yeah, I in a they, fish tank. I thought they talked about it. Oh, did they talk about that Jaws? Was, so, yeah, they probably did. Uh, something about a shark, I think. I think. I'm not positive. Probably Bruce the shark. My yes, guess. that, was, that would have been a real Easter egg. That was the name of the shark in Jaws. Right, yeah, that's Bruce, why I yeah. said that. Yeah. It was also uh, Spielberg's lawyer, <laughs> which is why he named it after him because yeah. he was a shark. <laughs> yep. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of useless information on Spielberg. I have useless. It's all good. Some, I think some it's pretty of useful. It's yeah. Useful. Who knows? Did they put anything from your guys' favorite video game in it? Like, what's your favorite video game? Did they have a reference of it inside the movie? No, nothing that I saw that it went. Whoa. Yeah. It's not like I played no, a I lot just of adventure. No, I mean, like, your favorite video game. What's your favorite video game? Yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Mario? <laughs> I know. Honestly, that's that's mine. I don't know I if play it's o- Mario I, Party I play Overwatch. I play Overwatch Bros. a lot, but yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they had any. I don't think they had any Nintendo stuff in there, did they? They didn't. It was kind of unfortunate. I wanted to see a little bit of Nintendo. You gotta, you gotta assume that half of the budget on this was spent buying rights. Yeah. To every character under the sun. Yeah. The budget was estimated at 175 million dollars. That's a lot of. Me CGI. and Mike looked that up right before this podcast. Yeah. So. You gotta think what got fucking Spielberg in this was like, you only gotta. Fucking direct right. twenty minutes of live action. Yep. <laughs> we'll do the rest yeah, on we'll computer. Do, yeah. He'd be like, "Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. Too, yeah." Twenty minutes of live action, and then I, he just gets to throw his licensing, all, all of his movies, and everything yeah. in it, and everything from the eighties. 
I thought like I know I know we've had a few minor critiques as far as like whatever, but I thought the story development was good. At no point did I ever feel lost in this movie. Did you guys ever feel lost or like? What's I never felt lost, but I never felt like anything surprised me. I mean, yeah, no, for sure. I'm not. Yeah, I never felt lost, but yeah, no, it never confused me or anything like. Mm. Inception or something. I was going, what the hell's going on? No, no, I don't mean that. I just mean like from one from one act to the next. It was very smooth. I felt like the movie all had a pace and it just was very smooth forward. I never at any point yeah. was like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's just a very I feel like there was. A it's reason. a very bare bones basic storyline. Right. Yeah. Was just like the book is, yeah. where it's a, it's an adventure. It's him going against a bad guy, and literally, it's a like a turn-based adventure game from, you know, he's got to get the keys mm-hmm. and then he saves, gets the girl. Then it's exactly yeah, it that. Is the it, it's a, yeah, it's exactly. And it's kind of, I think that that's kind of on purpose because that is what all the video games and everything was from the eighties. Yeah. And it still is a huge part of video games. Yeah. I mean, you gotta think every Mario was you having to save peach mm-hmm. over and over. <laughs> How many times is Bowser going to kidnap fucking Peach? Peach, get your shit together. Seriously. Get some better fucking yeah. security. Fool me once. Shame on yeah, but you. Peach, you're, you got caught at least 50 times. At least. I mean, Mario at this time. I mean, get the hint, Mario. You're being cheated on. <laughs> All right? They're in love. To figure out. Okay. <laughs> you can't keep... I think Mario's the one kidnapping her. Very well could be. Conspiracy theory. Whoa. Yeah. Mario's a That's psycho ex boyfriend. That's childhood shit that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like Ring Around the Rosy, you know, that kind of stuff. That all that stuff subliminally <laughs> super dark. Maybe that's what Mario was. Yeah, for sure. It's possible. It is. Any other uh, things you loved, hated? Any more Easter eggs? I mean, uh, there's a, there was 200 Easter eggs. <laughs> I mean, we, we this podcast would be three hours if yeah. we had to dissect yeah. every single one. Um, I wish, like we said, we're, we kind of touched on it, but I wish they would have got Simon Pegg a lot more. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they could have built a lot more on that relationship. In the book, they build, in the book, they end up going to his house, and he ends up like the one supporting them, and like he has all the newest shit because yeah. he was like co-owner of you know oasis right. or whatever so he's super rich but uh yeah so they and they keeps really and he's kind of like at this time because his name's og isn't it yeah at this time og he's like as in oasis way terms or whatever he's like a god mm. just like halliday is in this in in the book too halliday is like this whatever his wizard name was right some fucking nerdy shit but <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, that's that's the kind of thing, and like in this, you felt like Og or Simon Pig's character was not involved at all in the Oasis or whatever, mm-hmm. or not, or just kind of not utilized. I thought, right? Yeah, and why it's get Simon Pig? Yeah, why get him to play that if yeah. you're not gonna use him in the Simon Pig way? Exactly. Yeah, it was I, disappointing. I, that that was and the biggest disappointment. And instead, at the end, you just kind of get him. Oh, good job. Yeah. You guys did great. Yeah. The the risk of the world was on the fucking line. <laughs> Og, you could have helped out a little more. Yeah, I like Spielberg's style because he he did this. He, he does this in his movies where it's like this this weird movie trope, but it's hilarious to me. I love the end after it's all said and done, and they arrest uh, they arrest Ben, his character, and all that. And then the door shut. He goes, "Hold on, I got to do something." After Peg comes, kisses the girl, door opens up again. Then it's the lawyers, shuts the door. Then yeah. it's someone else. And, but they're all standing there ready to go. It's like, who called all these people up and was just like... But I love... That's how Spielberg... Like, Those are the things where it's like so fictional, but you believe it because it's in the story. Yeah. I it's, don't know why. Like, It's almost it surreal. It's surreal yeah, where, where it's like... like it's just... It's just like this different world where like these these comic comically things happen to yes. him or stuff. But uh, but he yeah. makes it work somehow. But it's not far fetched like, oh, enough funny. where you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It's just everyone everyone in Super movies kind of you kind of know what they're coming. Lawyers right. are lawyers. Right. Lawyers are CEOs or CEOs. I mean, they're all like the one base kind of we know where yeah. they are and everything. But I just thought it was funny how it's just he'd shut the door two yeah. seconds later, open it. It's a brand new set of people all standing there ready yeah. to go. Shut I, it, open. And you could tell, even you can tell it's Spielberg. Obviously, it's it's obviously not his best movie, but uh, you can tell it's still Spielberg, especially in those live action scenes. Yeah, that scene with uh, Halliday 
were there in his childhood home, mm-hmm. I thought I really liked. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Where, Great. Where he was like, uh, it shows him as a kid and whatnot. Yeah, and he likes, I like to keep him yeah. around. Sometimes. I like that. I li- and I like. That actor was fucking amazing. The that guy's been guy. in a ton of no, Spielberg I know he stuff. Has yeah. Been, yeah. Uh, Bridge of Spies, and uh, he was in the BFG too. But uh, yeah, I liked that scene a lot. I liked I liked all the flashback scenes. I like the scenes where it shows the dynamic between Og and uh, Halliday, where they mm-hmm. both fell in love. Because in in the book, also that's a huge part, and that's what broke up their friendship or whatever. We actually haven't even talked about one character at all. How did you guys like T.J. Miller's performance as like that weird assassin oasis? Well, guy? you should just know by the way we haven't brought it up at all. I just thought it wasn't very memorable. Yeah, no, I, okay. I mean, he was, a, he was a nerdy, kind of underused kind of... thing. You, he's supposed to be this huge assassin guy that like rules the underground of the oasis, but he's not. But he's also like this, much. and he's like, yeah. And why, why is he not going after these things? Why? I mean, yeah. instead well, of being, what I didn't instead of being, could you just zero out anyone at any time? Could you just walk up to him with a virtual gun and shoot him in the head? That's what I didn't understand. I know. And, and it and in the book it says there's like these player versus player worlds where you go. But if you're like at school or whatever, there's no weapons because the school yeah. the, there's a school planet, a virtual, a virtual, reality. and it's all yeah. planet, and you can't use weapons. So. It all has those rules and those details or whatever, but in this one it did seem like I know. I know. I was like, why not just walk up to to yeah. Wade and Bam. Artemis and just shoot him? Like, why is he doing all? But then IOI broke in and was shooting him, and he exactly. almost and went, the, and it I, didn't make any sense. And that it's like, part didn't make any sense. And it's like, like in the dance world, why would there be? You're allowed to shoot people. <laughs> right. I have to assume this world is all dance. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. Why are we allowed? Why is IOI allowed to do anything when they yeah. don't own the Oasis or they don't have anything to do with the Oasis? I didn't understand that. It's little details, man. Yeah, I know. Drives me nuts. But uh, yeah, we didn't talk. We didn't talk. We should briefly talk about the soundtrack. Amazing, incredible. Open up with Jump. Yeah, which was got awesome me. as fuck. Pumped. Yes. <laughs> Tell you that much. Fist pumping in the yeah, air. Yeah, well, you have anything. Right? You make a movie in the 80s. You got to have some good music. You're going to have some to tools. Go along with it. Yeah. yeah. 70s, 80s. Yeah. As long as it's not early 2000s. Right. <laughs> and they played Blue Monday 88 again, which we heard that last in Atomic Blonde. Mm-hmm. Remember, that was the main yeah. theme. And then when that was playing in the dance, in the uh, dance room or dance world, I was like, oh, that's funny. Atomic Blonde's the first thing that popped in my head. Atomic Blonde's set yeah. in the 80s. Yeah, yes. I, know, I, know, so, yeah. I know, I know, I know. That's the funny <laughs> thing about it, too, you know. A lot of Duran Duran references. You have to. Too. Duran Duran and was a powerhouse you know, in the that. 80s, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of references, for sure. Yeah. I'm not a huge and Duran, I loved, Duran fan. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I'm I like not, the music, but I'm just not they're like huge one of the first, into like, it. Yeah, they were kind know. of alternate, but no, yeah. I never. But I loved all the, uh, I loved, uh, he went from Michael Jackson to Prince and then he ended up choosing a character that I'm actually unfamiliar with. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bogade or whatever. I can't remember. Bonsai. The Adventures of Bonsai. Oh, God. Yeah, he dressed as that character. It's a movie in the 80s. Like, it's a, it's a good movie. It's that. a crazy movie. Yeah, see, and that's like one of the few I have not seen. All those references I got, the Duran Duran, Michael Jackson, Prince. But then that oh, one. Oh, it's Adventures like, of Bonsai Bonanza. Bonsai Bonanza, yep, that's it. Yeah. And I just I that's just one I and again that, crossed over. I that's didn't see. that's kind of one of those deep cut references mm-hmm. that you're like, who's who is gonna get that? <laughs> right. I mean, obviously there's one there's one group of people that will get that. Oh yeah, for sure. There's one group of people that will totally like. I mean, bon, Bonsai Bonanza. It's a, it's kind of a cult film. Oh, where, you know, okay. it did not yeah. have it does not have a huge following, but like those '80s nerds that love uh, like war games and right, right, those right. those movies yeah. like that love those movies. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's like yeah, but I'm sure probably nine out of ten people did not get that yeah. reference. Yeah, so like if I did it, I would have just stuck with the '80s. But then you would have gotten an entire group of people that wouldn't have known what was Anything. going on or whatever. Yeah. And you do to a certain extent. You do have to cater to kids too. I think that's why some of the shit you don't that have put to. in the movie. Well, right, but if, if you want to make good yeah, money, if you're Spielberg yeah. at this point, you like in that green. You're liking that's that. That's very true. It's very true. He's he's like a billionaire now. I mean, oh, he's got to be. He owns DreamWorks, or he yeah. owns half of it. He's well, he's incredible. I mean, look at his career. He's, oh yeah, you know, and 
is what it is. Well, I got to get to work, guys. All Anything right. else? No, 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 not right now. I just mean soon. Yeah. But we got about 10, 15 minutes. What's up? Well, we should probably give our scores then. Well, what, did you have anything else? No, I think we pretty much covered everything oh, okay. that I had Because I didn't mean down. to cut you off. My bad. No, it's all good. Well, let's give it. You're going to go first, Mason. What? I got to go first? Yes, okay. Your you're pick. Guys, okay, you you're, guys may be a little... Weak. You guys may be a little... Uh, Shocked at my review. Again, I'm going to say overall, I really, I, I honestly, like, thoroughly, just going as a fan, I really did enjoy this movie. I loved all the callbacks, uh, all the nostalgia associated with this movie. Uh, I thought the movie pacing was great. I thought everything made sense. The only thing for me was there were some plot holes, or not plot holes. I don't want to say plot holes because that's not true because I understood the film. But there were some holes, some minor details that I was like, what? That didn't really make sense that we've gone over previously mm-hmm. in this podcast. Um, but overall, highly recommend this film. This is a fun film. This is a movie I went and saw twice. And not because I needed to, because I wanted to. Uh, overall, I gave this movie an 86. Wow. I liked it. And which must have been really high for Mr. Krause. But that's because you read <laughs> the book. So you're... No, I got going, like going, going into it, though, I knew... I knew it wasn't going to be. I'm not that kind of person where I know you're not. The right, book isn't going right, to be. Right, the book isn't going to be. Yeah. And I love the Harry Potter movies, and they don't re- they take a lot of, or they took a lot of leaps and bounds with the movies going away from the books that no one really had a problem with. Right. And this, like we said, this book, if this book was amazing, I probably would have yeah, a more of a, yeah, <laughs> more, a, more of a yeah. problem with it. But like I said, the book isn't bad. I think... You should definitely try it, Mason, because it has. I'm going to. It definitely, yeah. it makes you get in that mood where, like, I read it, I'm like, man, I just want to go watch fucking Breakfast Club and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, watch well, it fairly Yeah, yeah, off. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, cause it gets, and it gets you in it. Cause, and the writer does, he understands, because he's from the 80s. He understands it so well. That, he gets it. Yeah. Who's up next? I can go, I guess. Um, I pretty much 100% agree with what Mason said. I don't feel the need to go over and say the same things. But I will say that the one thing that I did not really care for in this movie was I felt that the final battle was kind of rushed. Like, it felt like they were just really trying to get to the point where they were inside the castle or whatever. And At that, that time, the movie was two, min- two hours yeah, and 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. It couldn't be any it, longer. It's, it just kind of sucked because they finally got, like, all these characters in the same sp- place. Mm-hmm. And they were only there for like three minutes. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. Like, it would have been cool to see like a boom. Now they're here. Now they're here. Now they're here. Now yeah, fight their that. way in instead of just, yeah, for sure. uh, we're in. Right. But that being said, I enjoyed this movie. Most of it probably was because of the callbacks and everything. It just mesmerized me and got me into a good mood seeing everything from childhood and whatnot. And I gave it an 84. Pretty close to me. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys are both idiots. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Cash, uh, 99%. No, yeah, just uh, I didn't, compared to Spielberg films, this is not even the top 10 Spielberg film for me. I mean, there's because, I mean, but it's hard to compare. That's like, I know he's like the fucking Da Vinci of films. <laughs> but, uh, but, and these, these later films I haven't loved. But, uh, I thought it was fun. For me, they, they, made choices that were like you didn't really I didn't understand why some they kind of took out the the best parts of the book and didn't leave it in the movie some choices and they took a lot of leaps and bounds and I, again I thought the the story was just very generic like I said I I figured out what was happening in the first 5 minutes I figured right. what was going to happen where this was going to go and whatnot uh but there were some scenes that I I loved like the shining scene and uh the scene where Halliday and them are in his house growing up, I like that a lot. Again, the characters I thought were pretty boring. I didn't think I wasn't ever too interested in the main character. I was more interested in like Artemis. Like yeah, I thought she was more interesting because she was like she was like underground. She was like the rebels or yeah. whatever. She had like this yeah. huge like underground system and everything that we never really got into. That was and he, another thing too. And that another I thing, liked Wade to learn did not more. ask a lot of questions about all this. Like all his <laughs> friends not. here from around the world. And they had kidnapped oh, hey, him yeah, too. Yeah. 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 And, they, 
And he's like, he's not, he's kind of, and again, that's just kind of the movie, just kind of having to keep moving, keep right. moving. And like, we can't ask a lot of questions because yeah. this movie's already two and a half. Time. Yeah. yeah. But that being said, I, I I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I gave it a 74. You know, that's funny because I said Brett Hughes is probably going to give this one a C. Yeah, yeah, which isn't horrible. Which isn't horrible. No, no. it's not horrible. Especially for you too because like, on a serious note, as far as like critiquing movies, I think you are the most efficient on this podcast. And yeah. I think you can get, like me and Mike, like I, I, I feel like, me and you score tend to score higher. Yeah, we we tend to score more on how entertained we were watching yeah, it, I while so. he actually picks it apart. But I really like the way that you score things because it puts things in perspective, and you bring up a lot of like shit that I'm like, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very true. That's very true. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I like just it. just I mean, little details for me. You're kind of an me. asshole because you bring her <laughs> down every week. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. that. It's the only it's reason, reason I do it. <laughs> I love this movie, but I, I can't, <laughs> I can't be the same. I'm not a fucking fall. I'm not a sheep. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I I want good, good Spielberg though. Right. I want like an ET experience or a Close Encounters of the Third Kind or something yes. where you see and you know it's fucking. Well, do you think that he could have done that with a mostly animated movie? I don't think he could have done this with that yeah. movie. No. no, I think maybe I think he probably could have done a little more because Spielberg obviously knows how to make a really, really good movie. But uh, again, I think I don't think he was as involved as he is in yeah. this. I think it was him just coming in and kind of overseeing a lot of it. Because I mean, it's not Spielberg at a fucking computer yeah. rendering the CGI and everything. Yeah. He always had a part. But uh, yeah, I, I, he did good. I think he did as well for this book. If you read, the, I think if you read the book, you you'll think you can't even really make a movie out of yeah. this. Yeah. And that's why I was kind of surprised when I heard it was coming out. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Good Spielberg, though. Jurassic Park Spielberg. Mm-hmm. That's what I fucking want. <laughs> All righty. Well, if that's it, uh, follow us on Twitter, Seen It Podcast. That's at Seen It Podcast. Michael Falk is on Twitter, What the Falk 63 Cash is on Twitter, that's just Cash. Our Instagram page is Have You Seen It. Our sister page is Have You Seen It News. If you want your news and movie news and whatnot, we post on there once or twice a day. I got to say something yeah. before we sign off. All right. I, what day Speech. is it? Speech. I think that we're officially at it one year now. Just about. So. Just about. Yeah. Really? So I think we should finally give this away. We've been one saving a fan. Yep, we said. We've had a Fandango. We said gift one card. year from now. Yep, we'll be big enough. Away. People so, are gonna want yeah, this. So let's post. Let's figure out a way that people can enter and post that on uh, social media this week. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good for me. Look for some free movie tickets that you can there win. You, you can win. Movies are expensive these days. They are. They're not cheap. Unless you not have a movie pass. Unless you have movie pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then. Use that on popcorn or whatever else. Well, yeah, and you, you, I mean, Avengers is coming up, and you should probably pre-order tickets. So. Oh, good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna have to enter in in this competition. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little short on <laughs> cash. Short you think cash I can get today, in on that? So cool. yeah. All righty, um, I, I think that's it. We did the sign-offs and uh, everything else. So. Yeah. So, uh, sayonara. Oh, you should have said game over. Oh. Hold on, let's redo this. So, <laughs> so this is the Have You Seen a Podcast. We're about ready to sign off. So, yeah, until next time. G- game, game over. Game <laughs> over. <laughs>